Namaskar. I am grateful to all of you who have joined today in paying homage to Mahatma Gandhi on his 76th Martyr's Day. Mahatma Gandhi gave his life for the cause of harmony, brotherhood and humanity on 30th January 1948. It indeed was tragic that a saint of universal peace and non-violence fell a victim to violence and his sacrifices will never be forgotten. I thank the Indian Mission for hosting the tribute to pay homage to Mahatma Gandhi and recall his profound thoughts and reflect upon his legacy. It's always an emotional moment to recall Mahatma Gandhi on the day of his martyrdom. Gandhiji is widely acknowledged as one of the greatest leaders of the nonviolent movements the world has ever seen. His influence extended beyond the borders of India to the rest of the world. A simple, pious man, Gandhiji identified with and won the hearts of the people. He spent his life fighting to overcome various forms of oppression, exploitation and injustice. Even though seven decades have gone by since Mahatma Gandhi passed on, in every part of the world, his relevance is felt as strongly as ever before and his vision and actions are of an enduring significance for all times and places. His approach to life was holistic and cannot be divided into watertight compartments of social, religious, political, personal and public life. Gandhiji stands out as the champion not only of political democracy but also of economic and spiritual democracy in today's world. Arnold Toynbee, the English historian, a philosopher of history, the author of numerous books, famously said, and I quote, Mahatma Gandhi was the first person in human history to lift the ethic of love of Jesus Christ above mere interaction between individuals and make it into a powerful and effective social force on a large scale. If humanity is to progress, Gandhi is inescapable, unquote. Gandhiji as a person, but as a social and political force, continues to live amongst us. His philosophy of non-violence and its influence worldwide, as well as the strategies and characteristics, made Gandhiji successful and inspired numerous peaceful movements. Gandhiji's philosophy of non-violence involves civil resistance and refusal to comply with the unjust laws. Gandhiji showed the world that the love of one's people need not be inconsistent with the love of humanity. He strove to free the downtrodden from the shackles of injustice, slavery and deprivation. But he was also obsessed with the future of the human race. He said, and I quote, There is no hope for the aching world except through the narrow and straight path of nonviolence. Millions like me may fail to prove the truth in their own lives. That would be their failure, never of the eternal law." Unquote. Mahatma Gandhi had a profound influence on Dr. Albert Einstein. Dr. Einstein's message on Gandhiji's 75th birthday sums up the essential character of Gandhiji's leadership. Dr. Einstein said, and I quote, a leader of his people, unsupported by an outward authority, a victorious fighter who always scorned the force, a man of wisdom and humility who has confronted the brutality of Europe with the dignity of the simple human being and at all times risen superior." Unquote. Gandhiji's resonance and impact is felt across the world. Many world leaders have been inspired by him and continue to get inspired till today. In all the countries, people have great reverence and respect for Gandhiji. The world today is faced with many kinds of conflicts and diverse types of crisis. We see Mahatma Gandhi's emphasis on universal brotherhood and peaceful coexistence having an all-time relevance. His teachings are therefore the most upheld principles. In fact, a true testimony of Gandhiji's teaching lies in the fact that mere good ends do not justify bad means. Today in the world, the emphasis is on human dignity and upholding the values of natural justice. There would be no better tribute to Mahatma Gandhi than to rededicate ourselves towards the cause of peace and mutual tolerance. Nonviolence and the message of peace is a familiar word among the world leaders to settle any dispute. 
it goes without saying that it is never possible to evaluate how much India and the world owes to Mahatma Gandhi. For Gandhiji, peace was not an end by itself. Rather, it was only a sort of means to ensure better welfare for the mankind. Mahatma Gandhi's lifelong quest was in the pursuit of truth. In fact, he even had said, and I quote, truthfulness is more important than peacefulness, unquote. Non-cooperation was one of Gandhiji's methods for achieving justice. Freedom and justice were supreme for Mahatma Gandhi. The supreme values of Ahimsa and compassion were the basis of Gandhiji's philosophy. Practically, he desired solutions for all problems through the means of non-violence and truth. His ideas based on non-violence are entirely important in the world. They are completely relevant today and will remain so in the future as well. Gandhiji said, and I quote, The very first step in non-violence is that we cultivate in our daily life, as between ourselves, truthfulness, humility, tolerance and loving kindness, unquote. He demonstrated that peace and non-violence are the two pillars of any peace process that upholds the humanity. These two are inseparable. He said that for bringing full solutions, the means have to be non-violent for any protest to settle a dispute through Satyagraha. His entire life story is about action, to bring about positive changes. He both succeeded and failed in what he sought to do, but he always moved forward and he never gave up the quest for improvement, both social and spiritual, and both for individuals and for the nation as a whole. Today, Gandhiji is remembered not only as a political leader, but as a moralist who appealed to the universal conscience of mankind. There is a galaxy of men, women and children in different parts of the world who have taken a leap from Gandhiji to fashion their initiatives for ensuring peace, non-violence, justice and for fighting discrimination. Gandhiji believed that moral degeneration is the root cause of all evils, including conflicts. This explains his lifelong crusade of attainment of moral values such as truthfulness, non-violence, purity of means, love, self-control, forgiveness, respect, friendliness, compassion, mercy, etc. His message resounds with people of all faiths worldwide as he is the spiritual and political leader of one of the world's most profound and complex cultural traditions. His ethical leadership accomplished what was thought to be impossible by many. According to Parallel Nair, Gandhiji's private secretary for a long time, what made Gandhiji almost unique among leaders of men was his capacity to harmonize widely different points of views so that they become contributory to the examination of the common goal. An outstanding instance of this was the way in which he dealt with his colleagues who differed from him. While holding to his own principle, he allowed his colleagues full scope to serve the country according to their light. Because of this, not only the most intimate relations continued between them, but also those who differed from him ultimately came around and worked under his leadership. He taught that ethical conduct is a continuum along which it is impossible to divide means from ends. He had said, and I quote, we who seek justice will have to do justice to others, unquote. The prime component of Gandhiji's leadership was his elevated vision that humans, the highest manifestation of God's creation, can and would live in harmony and peace, firmly adhering to truth. He never considered himself infallible. Gandhiji called himself a practical idealist who began every action with himself. He realized that actual conduct was far superior to preaching about conduct. He walked the talk. Gandhiji's life was an epic experiment in principled living, whereas most sincere thinking people contemplate adherence to principle only to conclude that the realities of modern life make living strictly according to the principle impossible or at least impractical. Gandhiji went ahead and tried. That he succeeded to such an impressive degree is in part a testament to the strength of his determined will and in part the result of his clear conception of a set of worthwhile principles. But Gandhiji also succeeded because he managed the application of principles with a pragmatic eye towards the dynamic, fluid nature of the day-to-day. -day. He had the ability to view human beings as human beings without attaching any labels. 
Whenever people used to come to meet him, the respect that he showered on them made them feel that Gandhiji poured himself into their hearts. He became one with them. His faith was in the oneness of God's creation. He did not harbour hatred, ill will or bitterness towards others and believed in absolute oneness of human beings with God. One of the qualities that distinguished him was his unique outlook about work. Within him too, there could have been distinctions of work, like less important work, work of more importance, etc. But with work too, there is consistency. He used to consider each task to be God-given task, a gift from God. And as it was all God-given, he could see equal importance in everything and did it with equal reverence. This spirituality gave depth to all his work. He had the ability of looking at the system, at tradition, as being apart from the individual. He did not waste his energy on taking revenge against individuals, as he understood that the individual is a prey to the system. He was soft-spoken, humble and very trusting with adversaries. Even in the extreme situations, he maintained the balance, sense of humour, wisdom and calmness of mind. His goals were always high, but the objectives were small but measurable. Each big non-violent moment led by him were interspread with smaller moments with achievable objectives, which were successful in keeping the morale of the people high. A strong sense of self-respect marked Gandhiji's character from a very early age. He was incapable of discriminating against anyone. He suffered no insult and insulted no one. He could feel the pulse of the people. Only he was able to understand what people think and what they believe. His first and foremost consideration was to be of service to people. He had a keen desire to restore the dignity of all human beings. His desire was to contribute, to leave the world a slightly better place than he entered it. In Gandhiji's revolutionary world, leaders were servants. This model of servant leader the concept which Gandhiji demonstrated more than 76 years ago is now widely recognized. The servant leader sacrifices himself and only himself. We see in Gandhiji's leadership that he begins by taking sole responsibility for his values and actions, but he also offered them as models for emulation. Gandhiji had realized that untruth, injustice, oppression and tyranny last only so long as their victim accepts them. The moment one learns to say no to injustice, their edifice collapses immediately. This was true for the political, the economic and the social order. At every step, he practiced voluntary self-control through self-examination, self-reflection and self-purification. He constantly kept examining himself. He was not divine, nor was he gifted with a superior intellect. He was an ordinary person and like any ordinary persons, he stumbled in the course of the journey. What was uncommon in him was that he learned from every wrong step. Gandhiji was a person who was setting up new standards in society and that is why he spread such traditions. His leadership could be seen in such measures too. Gandhiji was eternally vigilant. Most of his life, except towards the end, he had total control over his sleep and used to work for 18 hours a day. He always talked about the importance of doing things in a well thought out and well organized manner. He lacked laziness, which is also of advantage in leadership. But from that wakefulness, what really developed was his role as a conscience keeper of the country. Mahatma Gandhi firmly believed that it was possible to imbibe the personal virtues as societal values in the society. Someone is truthful, someone is courageous, someone is honest, someone is fearless. These are individual qualities. Gandhiji was interested in ensuring that these become widespread in society. He used to remain positive under all circumstances and that was his main trait. He had faced many challenges in his life and there are many instances of his habit of not giving up in the face of difficulties and obstacles. He was very particular about doing the right thing at the right time. The implication of the word trusty became clear to Gandhiji in the light of his attempt to understand the meaning of non-position, aparigraha, he developed it into the principle of trusteeship. He advised rich persons to act as trustees for the poor of what they accumulated. He implored people to be ethical, honest, lead a simple life and serve the people. Gandhiji had a straightforward answer to greed and said, 
and I quote, take only what is necessary to satisfy the needs customary in your society, then spend the rest for social service, thereby becoming a trustee of common good, unquote. He desired purity of means not only among individuals, society and religion, but also in the political realm. Today, when the world has become more complex than the one experienced by our sages and would be even more so in the years to come, the purity of means emphasized by the man who experienced absolute oneness would be even more relevant. Pure means have led the world on the path of peace, love and enrichment. In the absence of these, the annihilation of the human race, a deluge, appears even more immediate. Mahatma Gandhi advanced steadfastly on the path of morality and spirituality. He removed every obstacle along the way, reached a higher plane at every juncture and continued his journey upwards. His journey has been the journey of humanity. One of the strategies that made Gandhiji an ethical leader was his capacity to build bridges between various communities. Gandhiji saw the inherent humanity of all individuals, regardless of their caste, religion, gender or social position in society. Because of this, he could promote religious harmony through his personal and public actions. He provided leadership by example and exhibited the perfect synthesis between personal morality and public action. Gandhiji's greatest legacy is his advocacy for non-violence as a means of overcoming oppression and bringing about peaceful conflict resolution. It is this belief that influences the actions of millions of citizens who are contributing to non-violent movements across the globe in the 21st century. Gandhian humanism and its practical application are the way forward in the world. His noble spirit and warm humane kindness have endeared him to all humanitarians throughout the world. In the present time, its importance has further increased and Gandhiji is becoming more relevant. Nowadays, our world has become so interdependent that any conflict between nations inevitably impacts the rest of the world. The only way for establishing peace in the world is through non-violence. We need to develop a sense of solidarity among ourselves by considering other human beings as our brothers and sisters, as part of one family. Gandhiji's ideas of non-violence was to live and help others to live. Helping others to live with mutual respect should become the foundation of our life. Gandhiji stood for the right to freedom, right to dignity and equality, and the right to freedom from bondage, poverty, untouchability and discrimination. All these are the essence of his approach towards humanity. Mahatma Gandhi had said, and I quote, When I despair, I remember that all through history, the ways of truth and love have always won. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time, they can seem invincible. But in the end, they always fall. Think of it always, unquote. Today, humankind is reeling under various kinds of social tensions and imbalances, disturbing his peace. In such a scenario, Gandhiji's words to believe in the possibility of permanent peace are prophetic. When peace and harmony become the main cause of every kind of service rendered to the nation and its people, it becomes a service to God. We have a unique opportunity to take the lead and open a new page in human history by learning from Gandhiji to address the global challenges. It is because our own human existence is so dependent on the help of others that our need for love and compassion lays at the very foundation of our existence. Therefore, we need a genuine sense of responsibility and a sincere concern for the welfare of others. On 30th January 1947, a year before Gandhiji was assassinated, he had said on many occasions to his associates, and I quote, if I get bedridden due to some disease and die, tell the world that I was not a Mahatma. But if I am on my way to the prayer and someone shoots me, and if I face the bullets on my chest with Rama's name on my lip and bear no grudge against the person who indulged in violence, then tell the world that I was a true devotee of God. Unquote. In his prayer discourse that Gandhiji gave on his last birthday, 2nd October 1947, he had said, and I quote, There was a time when I wanted to live for 125 years, but I do not desire to live to be 100 or even 90. I have lived for 78 to 79 years, and that is enough for me. Unquote. 
Perhaps he had a premonition when even two days before his assassination, Gandhi just said in his prayer speech, and I quote, if I am to die by the bullet of a madman, I must do so smiling. God must be in my heart and on my lip. And if anything happens, you are not to shed a single tear. Unquote. The heart that bled at the sight of the misery of others was bled to death on 30th January 1948 with the three death-dealing slugs buried deep in it. India lost her soul, but his spirit lives on and that spirit will continue to live among us as it carries in its chapters the mild but unassailable truth that peace is a positive force and that it can still move the human race away from darkness towards light. Mahatma Gandhi had declared, and I quote, Am I going to be silenced after my death? I will proclaim my faith even in death and speak from the grave. Unquote. What was this faith that he wanted to proclaim from his grave? It was faith in truth. That was God. It was faith in the goodness of all, as all are capable of truth. It was faith in the goodness of mankind. It was faith that despite the falls and upheavals, humanity would move towards goodness. Because truth, that is God, is only interested in the welfare of its creation. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian Mission for remembering Mahatma Gandhi on this Martyr's Day. My special thanks are to all of you who have joined me online. Namaskar.